Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share with you today uh, the uh, sustainable project management for the green energy industry. So uh, what we have here today is um, my thoughts and uh, our experience that we have done for our company uh, using the uh, sustainable project management. So uh, what we have here is a simple analogy uh, of green uh, energy industry. When we have a question, what do you mean by clean energy? What do we mean by green energy? What do I mean by sustainable? So clean, green, sustainable. Do they all mean the same thing? What do you all think? Right. So all of you have your own ideas of what we mean by clean, uh, green, and uh, let me take this away. Okay. So there's always a know-how uh, solutions what we have in solutions, there's always limitations. And when we talk about uh, the difference between clean energy and green energy, we have always asked ourselves, clean energy is the generation of energy that does not produce greenhouse gas emission. That's what it means by uh, clean energy. And green energy is the generation of energy from infinite sources that does not produce carbon emissions or negatively impact the environment. So that's the difference, okay? So whereas the clean energy is actually the output, the generation of energy, the process that does not produce your GHG, but your green energy is the source. What source that we use? And this source does not produce carbon emission and it doesn't negatively, and it doesn't negatively impact the environment. Now, knowing the difference is important because this helped us to combat the, the, the current climate crisis. My next question is, is clean energy sustainable? Is green energy sustainable? Are both of them sustainable? So these are the questions that, that, that we have to uh, answer with in the industry all the time. Uh, let me dwell a little bit into the uh, details. We have got the solutions. As an industry, uh, we normally come up with plenty of solutions. We have plenty of know-how. But there are always limitations. As for the perspective of the uh, policy from the college itself, you will have experienced your limitations. Now, let's take a look at the uh, knowledge gap. In the energy savings in green energies industry, what is the knowledge gap? What is it that uh, it's um, <clears throat> uh, making this gap exist in the industry and the academicians. That means the students, the college students and all that. Like we have know-hows, for example, the industry have the know-hows, we have got all the hardware, the software controls, the on-off switches, the temperature controls, uh, various efficiency devices and retrofits, uh, IPs, uh, we do green, we do clean energy. Uh, we also look at the supply and the value chain. However, on the college side, there's always limitations. Now, these limitations has been caused due to the accessibility to information and tools, right? So the college itself will have different access to information and tools, depending whether you, you subscribe to certain database or not, whether you have the resources, the financial resources to tools. Um, so this knowledge gap exists because of this limitation. How do we uh, improve the assess? How do we recognize? How do we promote the creativity of the, um, of the uh, know-how, all right? How do we promote the creativity of the students in this developing world? So this has caused such a knowledge gap to persist. So today I will be address, addressing on the um, knowledge gap. How do we help to bridge this, right? Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, when we talk about the industry and the policy, uh, I want to approach to this presentation to try to bridge that gap. Right? How do we help the, the, the college to bridge that gap? 
and how do we industry players approach the uh, the college to help us to do uh, certain things like research and business development right how do we work together hand in hand now when uh, when the college have got all this data uh, information when you do your projects I wonder these are some of the questions that come to mind right what sort of data does policies you have? Are they collected? Are they compiled? If yes, what are the tools for data collection? How are they tabulated and analyzed? Are these, um, uh, what do you call it, data used for creation uh, to feed back to the technology providers? So how can it be shared with the industry? And how can the industry uh, data be shared with policies? So it's both two ways, all right? So you have got a gap here. You have data, you collect it. If that's are they the tools there that you use? And how are you sharing it with the industry? And if in the industry, like Newton, that's where I come from, the energy saving, we have data, how do we share it with you? So there's such a gap that exists right now. So what happens? So these are the questions that, um, we try to address. I think as the industry strive towards sustainability, the college, uh, the policy C participants, um, the community should also strive for sustainability. Why is this so? Because we are all in the same planet, right? And um, sustainability is where we try to meet the needs of the present without compromising, compromising, sorry, there's a typo error here, without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. So while meeting our own needs at the present time, we are also making sure that we don't compromise the future generation to meet their own needs. We need to balance that. So just likewise, um, we have got industry, we have got the OLCC community, how do we work together on this? So sustainability needs to be two things, uh, two, a few, uh, five things, sorry. Um, number one, it needs to be affordable. Okay, whatever technology that we use uh, for uh, the green energy industry, it has to be affordable. If it's not affordable, it cannot reach the, the mass. It has to be accessible. It has to be replenishable, right? You cannot say, that's it. We have used up all the, um, uh, the palm oils as fuel, all right, the, the oil palm trees as fuel, and that's it for biomass, and we don't have any more. It has to be safe for environment. It has to be available in the long term. So these five criteria needs to be um, looked at. So next, what types of projects um, in the industry, uh, green energy industry, can uh, the policy C uh, and the industry work together on. So we need to look at uh, what was shared just now using the PRISM. PRISM stands for Projects Integrating Sustainable Methods. So whatever projects that we do, it has to integrate all the methods that is sustainable. We need to build in all the sustainable methods into our projects. And we have an, another, um, uh, what we call it, challenge that is to make sure it matches our national agenda as well. So um, question is, do we know what the national agenda is? Where are we working towards? What is that direction? So projects that can be run must meet these few criteria. It strive, a good project will strive to create an awareness, awareness of what is needed, awareness of what the issues are, awareness of how we can contribute, right? The people who are doing the projects must have that intention to create awareness for particular issues or particular hypothesis that they are looking at. And number two, the project must strive to acknowledge the current issues at hand, the current solutions at hand, the current know-how at hand, how we are upscaling it, and we'll be able to assess the situation. Where are we now? 
uh, currently, where are we sitting? Are we progressing? Are we using sustainable methods? There are a lot of questions to answer. Your projects um, that we attend should attempt to provide solutions, to provide a way, uh, approach to solve the issues at hand. Suggestions, this is where suggestions come in. Ideas, innovations. So to address the current issues. Fourthly, but not least, Whatever projects that we um, <clears throat> take on must be able to create transformation, must be able to impact. And if we uh, apply the sustainable method, uh, methodology, that is the PRISM or GPM standards, uh, what we have currently this morning, we will be able to use this as the framework to help us ensure that there is a transformation and an impact on the project that we apply on. What are the examples of projects that we have um, currently uh, been doing right now? So some of the questions that uh, we have is on energy efficiency. What are the research and uh, business development that we currently entail on? If we want to develop uh, new technologies, if we want to develop um, new applications, if we want to redesign the entire scope of energy efficiency in the industry, uh, may it be energy retrofit, may it be new products, how can we work with the Poly uh, CC community to uh, work on this project, right? So I know that the college, uh, the Poly CC themselves, they also want to do research. The industry players also want to do research, but somehow they are moving in different directions, right? So when the policy say wants to do research, they do it on their own. When the industry do the research, they're doing on their own. And then when we approach the, the college or the university to do research, there seems to be a huge gap. We cannot, we cannot meet. Why is this so, right? So these are some of the projects that your, um, you know, uh, as a policy say, could embark and reach out to the industry. Sometimes as industry players, we do not know how to reach out to the uh, polytechnics, the institutes, the research institutes to, do, to undertake a research. We are moving from you know, um, north to south, east to west, just trying to get an institute to partner with us. So these are our challenges. Secondly, um, we always talk about managing waste, right? So managing waste uh, doesn't stop there. We look into uh, projects that is now uh, converting waste to energy. So what are the limitations right now? Um, for Malaysia, there will be so many types of uh, issues that we can talk about, whether they, they are uh, just too much landfill or not enough landfill, not enough land to fill. Uh, there are too many uh, types of waste uh, that is not being sorted? Uh, do we have a technology to convert waste to energy without sorting the waste? So these are different projects that you can address on. Renewable energy. Um, we talk so much about renewable energy, but there will be a question on, um, on the industry side, uh, whether it is sustainable. What I mean by um, whether the renewable energy is sustainable. Because we know that, number one, manufacturing renewable materials, methods, are they sustainable? The way it is uh, manufactured, are they, are they sustainable? Can the materials be recycled? So these are one, two questions that come to mind, right? Um, if for example, if you do, uh, if you manufacture solar panels, um, one of the way to, to manufacture solar panels is to do silver mining, right? So silver mining is not a sustainable process, for example. And say solar farms, solar farms have got your um, operation continuously. Do we know how many solar farms in Malaysia are operating efficiently? 
And the second question is, what happens after that 21 years of operation? What do we do with the solar modules? Do we dispose them? Are they recyclable? So that is why these are the, the questions that come into mind. But what are we doing about it? So how do we, as an industry, uh, contribute to this area? Fourthly, conserving versus preserving the ecosystem. So sometimes we look at it, conservation protects the environment through responsible use of natural resources, right? But preservation protects the environment from harmful human activities. So it's two different things. Preserve is don't touch it, all right? Leave it alone, um, protect it from human activities. So it be cardinal enough, but conservation protects it by using uh, resources responsibility. So for example, how do we how do we exercise responsibility in conserving the ecosystem? Let's talk about hydro farms, right? Do we know how much our hydro farms disrupt the river ecology? When a hydro farm is created, you have a dam, you build a dam, the river ecology is disrupted. You displace the people uh, living around it, the community, right? So these are the areas that we have to look into. And, and, and the sustainable project management will help us to answer this question, right? Um, how do we impact the people? There are so many talks this morning. Um, a few people have, uh, you know, touched on the different five Ps uh, impacting on people, on the environment. So this is one example where we can uh, address this area where we want to make sure that it doesn't displace people, it doesn't, we don't disrupt the ecology of the river. And after the hydro uh, dam is uh, built. The generation of power, do we look at the GHG, which is the greenhouse gas, right? How much greenhouse gas is released? So these are the areas that uh, we could strive to understand. Now, um, oh yeah, before I, before I forget. Um, also, some of the things that we can look into will be the hydrogen uh, economy. Yeah? The hydrogen economy that is currently coming up is coming up quite aggressively. So what are the things that we can do is we can have projects and understand how can it impact Malaysia. We know Malaysia has got, uh, we are quite rich in natural resource, right? So hydrogen is one of our resources. So how does it impact Malaysia? So these are some of the examples of projects that we can look into. Um, digital platform. Um, in energy efficiency, in energy saving, digital platform is very important. We need to identify um, different methodologies of data capture. So when we do energy efficiency or energy savings in whatever, we need to be able to quantify, we need to be able to measure how much energy we are saving. So this data capture will need to be verified. So we need a digital platform to ensure that those data capture is done according to international standards using international methods. And how are we um, doing our data mining? How are we using the data? How are we applying the data for technology? So all these things are so essential to the um, green energy industry. It's not just about generating energy, but how are we ensuring that um, when we say we are saving energy, when we are using uh, less energy, less electricity, what is the data um, that is currently being captured? Are these data reliable? Are these data verified? Right? How can we validate the data? When we say we can save 10%, how do we come up with that 10% figure? So these are a lot of questions that um, uh, is essential. Now, secondly, uh, beside the PRISM um, uh, framework, we also need to understand where and what direction we are moving towards to. And this tells for our Malaysia agenda. So we know that currently we are targeting 2025 to achieve 31% renewable energy capacity. Where are we now? Are we able to reach 31% by 2025? And are we able to reach 40%? So all our projects that we uh, undertake is targeted towards this. 
to, to make sure that we are part of the contributing factors. Reducing 45% of GHG emission by 2030. And that's 60% by 2035. How are we right now? What is the assessment? Where are we benchmark? What is our baseline right now? Are we at 25%? Are we at 30%? Can we reach 45%? And all our projects that we undertake, how much contribution do we uh, give to the national agenda? We say we want to be net zero by 2050. We say we want to share our prosperity, share our prosperity to, the, to our suppliers, to our clients, to our own staff. Right? These are shared prosperity that we currently undertake. Um, I think now uh, MPCC, uh, I think Malaysia Productivity Corporation, right? MPC uh, has got an ESPO uh, a certification for organization that share the prosperity uh, goals with the people in the community. And how are we um, looking in helping our clients, all right, our staff to look into carbon tax and uh, emission trading? Um, I have uh, customers, uh, clients, all right, that we have to look into and, and they're so worried about this carbon tax that is coming in. Um, no doubt there's a lot of domestic emission trading scheme. All this is done by Maida. So when this come and impact, it will definitely impact on the bottom line. And how do we strive to go from there? Because it's we are not very far away from this. Huh? So the five P elements in the green energy industry, how does it impact towards sustainability? First, uh, we have talked about the five P's this morning so much. But in terms of the green energy industry, how it is relatable? When we talk about products that contributes towards energy savings, uh, energy efficiency, whether it is uh, renewable as well. We always talk about product lifespan. And product lifespan is, of course, the longer the better, but we also talk about what happens after the expire, after that 21 years of solar module on the rooftop, uh, after the 21 years of uh, solar panels on the solar farm. When the hydro dam get decommissioned, what happens, right? When the systems that you put in your customer's place, uh, they could be high end energy fans and all that. What happens when they are no longer serviceable? The quality of these products, of the equipment will be in question. What is the impact towards sustainability? Um, the process, we also look into a few things to be a um, sustainable project leader, you also have to look into efficiency. How efficient are these equipments? Question, are they maintained well? What happens to this product when, when, when it's no longer uh, in good condition? How do you dispose it, right? The disposal, is it just part of the waste? Is it recyclable? So what I have here is sometimes, um, I did a little bit of um, survey, all around and I realized something. A lot of times when you look at solar panels and the equipments uh, surrounding wind blades and all that, they are not recyclable. They are just being thrown away as part of the waste. And research has it that they will, at the end of the day, they will form 10% of the e-waste. So how are we looking into this? This is not sustainable, definitely, all right? So we are creating ways for the future, for generation. So we will impact, this will be a, a definite impact on sustainability. Say people, ethical behavior, like um, Noli just now has mentioned, you know, we talk about green procurement practices um, where there is no corruption. We talk about protecting the, the staff, the labor rights, the welfare, the, the, the safety, the health of our staff. So we give them decent working conditions. All this come back to the, the project. All this come back to the organization. Planet, in terms of um, green energy industry, we always target a few things. Um, carbon emission, uh, making sure there's clean energy return, renewable energy, how, how to make it more sustainable. Uh, in terms of energy efficiency, how to measure uh, the efficiency, how to 
uh, maintain that contingency. All right, it's not just for short term; it must be maintained. While we while we implement our projects, uh, we also need to look at a few things: conservation of biological diversity and natural resources. There must be responsible consumption of natural resources. We we'll make sure that. Uh, we conserve the biological diversity. Um, we make sure that there is a responsible disposal of waste as well, right? How to uh, manage the waste properly, how to convert the waste to energy. So there is no uh, uh, negative byproducts and negatively impacting on the planet. Contamination and pollution. Uh, one of the things that while we do all these things, we also have to remember one thing. There must be zero use of chemical in whatever efficiency projects that we have, whatever maintenance project that we have. Uh, each uh, solution that we bring in, uh, which we apply, has to have zero chemicals. We cannot use chemicals because it goes back to the earth, it goes back to the ground, it goes back to the water. And that's where you have pollution of your water, pollution of your air, and it contaminates um, the, the, the entire planet. So recycling and reuse, of course, is one of them. Prosperity. Now, how does this work? We talk about environment, we talk about planet, but you know, at the end of the day, the project has to be self-sustainable as well, where you need financial impact, you need sustainable benefits, cost ratio, we need flexibility and optionality because things change all the time. People change, environment change. There has, suddenly you come into a COVID environment. So how, how flexible is your business? How, how flexible is your, your bottom line to, to um, how should I say, to maintain that uh, prosperity cycle in, the, in your projects, right? So um, all in all, um, all this, uh, framework will point you towards uh, prosperity, towards contributing to the economy as well. So all these projects, if you look into, uh, yes, product, process, people, planet, but financial resources are also important. But at the end of the day, you also need to uh, positively impact the economy with your product. Okay. Now, um, so one of the examples um, that uh, I can share with you with our projects is that, that we have done and uh, we have uh, won for the Green Project Management Project of the Year Award 2021 is, um, is this. You could um, come up with a project and identify the areas that you can achieve in electricity saving, in your chemical saving, in your water saving as well and how much carbon reduction uh, you can totally uh, create. And then project 10 years later, how much are you able to achieve more? So this is our projection. And this is in 10 years, along the line, you'll be able to save a total of 21 million ringgit, projected savings for 400 and 500 million. So these are all uh, projected savings. Total project savings that we have come up to is 21 million. And then for projected savings will be 400 to 500 million. So we need, like I said just now, we need to quantify, we need to measure the data, we need to ver verify it for the purpose of this. Right? When we uh, say we do our ESG reporting, when we contribute to the SDG goals, this will be the final output. So project summary, the projects that we undertake um, should apply across multiple industries. Right. It shouldn't just um, tackle just one industry. That means when we talk about green energy industry, it must affect the retailers, it must affect uh, the, the, the manufacturers, it must affect the industries, different industry, the commercial areas, uh, commercial buildings, the manufacturers, the power plants, the oil and gas refineries, the hotels, the universities. So with such achievements shown, um, our goals will be to achieve all these things. And with certain projects, we have been able to achieve uh, using the uh, GPM framework. Uh, such tools have been able to assess. We help, uh, it has helped us to identify what are the target areas. So it has sort of given us a very uh, targeted view 
of how to manage our projects. So let's say for efficiency uh, in energy, we are able to produce high impact using our energy efficiency product or using our renewable energy products. We are able to benchmark our processes to quality standards like GPM. We are able to assess how are we giving back to the community, impacting the people. We suddenly realized that we need to have climate protection action, how to protect the planet. We are not just there to, to create renewable energy, to make sure that it's, uh, you know, we, we build a hydro dam or we build a solar farm or we do energy retrofit to buildings. We're not just doing that. Um, last but not least, uh, prosperity has increased, definitely. Uh, the contribution to prosperity has uh, increased substantially. It has helped us to embrace the sustainability in the economy. Uh, how? We have contributed better profits to our clients' brand, uh, businesses. Not just our own business, but to our clients' business. So um, thank you very much. That ends the presentation this morning. Uh, I'm open to questions if there are any uh, today. Thank you very much. Back to you, Anissa. Terima kasih Dr. Nikozito atas perkongsian yang uh, berdua tentang pengurusan projek mampan uh, untuk industri tenaga hijau sebentar saja tadi. Diharapkan supaya para hadirin mendapat manfaat serta pertambahan ilmu dari perkongsian-perkongsian dari empat panel pada sesi pertama kita pada hari ini. Baiklah, sekarang tiba masa untuk sesi soal jawab. Saya menjemput kembali semua penceramah dan juga speakers dan juga panel uh, serta tetamu dari JPPKK dan juga uh, Polisas untuk soal sesi jawab dan anda juga diminta untuk membuka kamera masing-masing semasa sesi soal jawab ini berlangsung. Terima kasih. I think, uh, thank you Anissa. Uh, for this sesi soal jawab ni, I think it is very critical that kita faham bahawa webinar kali ni Uh, agak berbeza juga berbanding dengan webinar yang mungkin yang telah diajukan kerana kita tahu bahawa uh, polisi C mungkin dah banyak menyertai uh, banyak program-program uh, award dan kita nak kalau boleh tahun ini penyertaannya adalah lebih Uh, menyelah mengikut standard-standard industri sebab kita tahu bahawa mungkin pada peringkat awal tu uh, didikan tu perlu kerana mereka baru nak uh, nak berjinak tentang apa yang nak dibuat dalam projek tapi kita tahu kita nampak banyak daripada the last few projects banyak projek-projek polisi C uh, sudah um, kita kata-kata ada mempunyai keterampilan eh, uh, yang mana boleh lead in the community dan boleh lead in the industry. And that is where I believe kalau kena ada keyakinan uh, dari pihak polisi C itself supaya lebih lagi membawa projek-projek yang membawa impak kepada uh, bukan sekadar kepada uh, komuniti setempat tetapi juga di komuniti di secara keseluruhan persekitaran dan juga Uh, national agenda juga lah yeah. so uh, saya mungkin um, saya nak buka soalan kepada Puan Rohania because uh, beliau dari JPKK uh, dan juga daripada Polisas kalau ada Bocik Anwar yeah. kita nak bawa tahun ini uh, untuk membawa kecemerlangan dari segi projek-projek uh, tahun ini, bagaimanakah kita uh, harus menjalankan Uh, didikan ataupun um, mentoring tersebut supaya kita nak sebuah projek-projek yang kita nak uh, pamerkan ataupun nak paparkan tu adalah projek yang uh, boleh dibawa ke tengah sebagai projek yang boleh membantu industri sekarang sebab kita tahu banyak ya eh, Nicole pun faham banyak syarikat-syarikat besar sekarang ni mereka dalam uh, kita panggil tenat sebab mereka tidak ada uh, kepakaran dan mereka sendiri tidak tahu cara-cara nak menjalankan separuh daripada projek-projek mampan tersebut. Contoh, waste management, waste to wealth, ya, energy saving. Ini semua projek-projek uh, industri yang memang uh, mereka terlibat secara langsung. Dan bila tak ada pakar tu, mereka akan uh, terbiar. 
dan mereka akan tercari-cari. So this is where kita nak bawa kepakaran daripada polisi C tersebut yang mana mereka kita dah train, kita dah ada lihat dia punya kewibawaan tu. Kita boleh bawa kepada industri sebab most of the uh, measurement ataupun the data analytics yang kita nak uh, pakai tu mestilah orang yang tahu tentang data yang nak di measure. Okay. So this way kita nak dengar daripada Puan Rohaniah sendiri apakah uh, cabaran yang dihadapi sekarang ni dalam membawa kepada keterampilan uh, politeknik untuk pergi bersama meng, uh, uh, membawa kepada satu uh, arus supaya boleh bertercimpung dengan industri-industri yang sedang uh, tenat untuk mem, mencari kepakaran. Okey, uh, terima kasih Dr. No, terima kasih kepada semua. Alhamdulillah perkongsi yang sangat baik. Jadi sebenarnya kalau kita lihat daripada semua orang kata industri-industri yang uh, berada di luar sana, bagaimana industri telah orang kata ada sebahagian industri lah yang telah meng, orang kata ber, me, menjalankan tanggungjawab kepada program-program yang berkaitan manfaat sebab kita kata kalau dalam uh, RMK12 pun mengatakan bahawa banyak peruntukan diberi untuk uh, agenda manfaat ni tapi saya rasa kalau kami eh, di Politeknik dan Kolej Komuniti kami masih lagi uh, susah mencari terutama ni industri-industri yang memang orang kata yang uh, mempunyai hasrat begini sebab hasrat begini adalah hasrat yang dikatakan sukarela bukan dipaksa negara pun belum memaksa okey semua industri wajib pada on out green sama ada manfaat ke teknologi teknologi whatever. So ini adalah skala cuma diberi bagi istimewaan tak ada dana dan sebagainya. Jadi kami memohonlah sebab kami di Politeknik dan Kolej Komite telah menjalankan uh, tanggungjawab kami iaitu menjalankan program-program yang berkaitan dengan asas sustainable, program-program kurikulum kami pun dah bangunkan kurikulum yang berkaitan dengan manfaat ada dalam kurikulum kami. Tadi seperti mana yang telah dibentangkan tadi oleh pena-pena kita, semua itu sebenarnya ada di dalam kami kurikulum uh, program pengajian di Politeknik dan Kolej komuniti yang kita telah tawarkan. Cuma sekarang kita dapat uh, perkongsian ini yang sangat baik daripada industri. Kami haraplah supaya industri itu macam tadi uh, apa ni uh, Dr. Nicole, uh, uh, apa Dr. No, apa Edgar Noli, uh, juga uh, Dr. Nusaid yang yang kita sekarang tengah mencari bagaimana peluang kita boleh bekerjasama dengan industri yang ramai di luar. Apa sebenarnya kena industri dengan uh, pelajar kita? Kita boleh. Memang pelajar kita dah buat uh, projek mampan. Semua kebanyakan uh, pro, di politik ini memang ada projek. Cuma kita nak cari bagaimana guide, contohnya kita kata sekarang yang kita kurang adalah daripada soft skill. Yang ada on teknologi kita banyak. Kita kata elektrik, solar dan sebagainya kita ada. Cuma on soft skill, bagaimana kita nak adapt soft skill, orang kata green soft skill tu ke dalam uh, attitude pelajar-pelajar supaya dia budaya. Jadi kita kata, oh bang sampah tak boleh merata-rata. Tapi kita tengok hari hari raya, bagaimana Kelantan, berapa guni bag, berapa dan sebagainya. Jadi ini yang kita sebenarnya terapkan supaya semua kawasan di Malaysia, semua ruang yang ada, yang kita ada di Malaysia ni, kita boleh orang kata, ada attitude hasrat kita bahawa, oh kami ni sayangkan alam sekitar ni, kami tak nak sepak itu. Bagaimana kami memohon daripada industri yang ada sekarang yang saya nampak, pemain yang paling orang kata yang orang kata yang boleh menerapkan sedikit soft skill dalam elemen elemen mampan atau, ataupun ni adalah daripada JPM lah kita nampaklah JPM dia bukan hanya pergi kepada on teknologi tapi dia pergi kepada all the elements yang ada dalam uh, uh, 17 sustainable tu uh, development goal jadi alhamdulillah uh, saya harap supaya uh, apa ni uh, Uh, mungkinlah pihak JPM ni boleh membantu kami lagi mencari lagi lebih banyak industri yang boleh kita collaborate selepas ni lah sebab ini sangat bagus lah uh, uh, ada yang pertama yang kita dapat hari ini adalah kami dah dapat lah pemain baru contohnya daripada uh, uh, landscape uh, Eli Arnoli daripada uh, Dr. Nicole daripada ni dan juga uh, ITSTS ya <laughs> Hisham ada uh, banyak lagi petang ni ada lagi ha uh, yalah maksudnya ini sebahagian yang kami dengar lah jadi kalau misalnya ada kita ada kalau kalau bacalah hasrat dalam blueprint kami kami ada tujuh bidang tumbuhan itulah bidang yang kita cuba ketengahkan jadi saya rasa kalau saya nampak senarai daripada Dr. Nor tu memang adalah 
Cuma kalau boleh kita nak supaya dia relate dengan apa yang ada di politeknik dan juga kita mohon bantuan daripada dinas sendiri supaya boleh membantu politeknik. Nanti kita akan bagi senarai politeknik ada 36 politeknik dan kita ada 132, 33 polis komuniti. Jadi uh, um, uh, kadang-kadang politeknik ini dia tak tahu nak perus apa kan. Polis komuniti pun tak tahu nak perus apa. Jadi dalam ni mungkin selepas ni kita ada siri kedua kita akan buat promosi yang lebih giat, lebih hebat supaya lebih ramai yang masuk. Mungkin hari ini sebab kita mungkin ada sedikit technical isu menyebabkan ada kekurangan dari sini. Jadi yang kedua nanti kita akan cuba dapatkan lebih ramai daripada politeknik supaya dapat join ni. Sebab saya dengar tadi, wow sebenarnya di luar sana industri telah ada satu industri yang telah buat lain daripada yang kebiasaan. Okay? Terima kasih banyak Dr. No dan semua. Saya serahkan semula kepada Dr. No. Mungkin kita dapat pandangan daripada Encik Anwar eh, tentang bagaimana polisas sebagai penganjur uh, Suspiti Award tahun ni, bagaimana kita nak bawa projek-projek yang lebih menyerlah kepada projek mampan supaya uh, projek-projek daripada projek ini uh, boleh dibagaikan sebagai uh, apa dipanggil industri standard punya projek. Okay, terima kasih Dr. Tuan Noh. Okay, um, Baraha, um, Syisham, eh. Dan uh, kalau kita dengar tadi, eh, semuanya bagi input yang sangat baik. Lah. Okay, cuma untuk uh, macam Baraha tadi, kita dasar yang karikulum buat macam kita dah terap kepada pelajar dalam itu, uh, kursus screen teknologi compliance kan. Jadi kita dah menerapkan budaya-budaya hijau di situ lah. Jadi untuk program yang MPCC Sustainable ni kita sebenarnya kita dapat kita sama juga daripada uh, agensi luar lah pada SW Corp menyokong sepenuhnya okay, kemudian Jabatan Perhutanan yeah. jadi kita ada juga uh, program CSR bersama komuniti iaitu penanam pokok bakau ini kita dapat kita sama penuh daripada Jabatan Perhutanan Kemudian yang terbaru nanti bulan Jun nanti ada daripada Majlis Bandaraya uh, Kuantan telah uh, sudi memberi uh, 800 pokok tak silap saya yang baru dapat ni supaya ditanam di sekitar polisat. Maknanya macam Dr. Nur no kata tadi, kita memang dapat uh, kerjasama lah daripada badan-badan uh, yang pedas, separuh kerajaan dan kerajaan untuk sama-sama dalam uh, menerapkan budaya hijau ni sebab kita tahu bahawa Kuantan ni ke arah go green dia banyak sekarang ni dia go green sebab bila dah jadi madan raya ni dia tapi go green dia ni saya nampaknya lebih ke arah tanaman pokok-pokok dulu lah okay, dan juga uh, program kempen pengguna plastik dan sebagainya dan uh, sebab itulah untuk program macam ni saya sebenarnya kita dah offer kepada semua student yang ambil khusus uh, Uh, green technology compliance ni supaya boleh ikuti sekali lah tapi malangnya kita uh, tak dapat menyertai banyak sebab melalui FB saja ya. untuk uh, untuk, untuk akan datang saya cadangkan kita boleh gunakan webback dan sebagainya supaya kita boleh luas lah ya. kita dapat uh, maklumat yang daripada tu lah ok uh, jadi Banyaklah program-program yang kita buat ni sepanjang sehingga bulan uh, 9 ni Polisah telah bersedia lah untuk ke arah uh, macam memperkasakan solar ya, solar energi di mana kita buat uh, solar di sekitar kampus kita okay, kemudian solar juga untuk pelajar-pelajar buat charging system lah, boleh charging di mana-mana jadi tanpa menggunakan bahan uh, elektrik lah kita gunakan solar tu. Okay, dan kempen-kempen uh, ni seterusnya akan uh, berlaku lah sehingga lah bulan sembilan nanti baru program kita akan buat dan kalau kita tengok pun kita boleh rujuk lah kita punya portal di mana program-program tu uh, kita dah letakkan di situ lah kemudian kemuncaknya kita akan ada pertandingan-pertandingan uh, yang melibatkan tujuh bidang utama tu kita masukkan semua sekali ya jadi tahun ni kita akan tengok kita nilai semua tujuh-tujuh tu boleh jalan ke tidak ha? dari segi penyertaan dia sebab penyertaan yang kita bagi tu sehingga 30 Jun jadi apa-apa aktiviti Januari hingga 30 Jun tu di, ada bukti dan sebagainya bolehlah uh, menyertai pertandingan yang kita buat 
Okay, jadi uh, akhirnya saya ucapkan terima kasih lah kepada Tenor dan Inisiatif GPM uh, TS Hisham, Hisham uh, yang saya nampak usaha daripada GPM ini memang bersungguh uh, untuk menjadikan Malaysia ke arah uh, Green uh, 20-30 ini nampaknya kita mungkin boleh berjaya lah okay. uh, dan saya nampak usaha ikhlas daripada pihak GPM uh, daripada Pak Green dia kena Betul, kena banyak uh, sabar dan sebagainya Betul, sebab dia masa yang ambil lama Begitu juga dengan Dr. Nicole Okey, saya rasa itulah pendapat saya setakat ni ya. Masih, Tuan Tuan okay, uh, Mungkin saya nak apa, menjelas sikit ya. uh, Saya rasa kalau pihak polisi C boleh adakan listing of the project Okey, mungkin uh, kita akan try to look into project matching Dengan ahli-ahli uh, SASNET Uh, in area where we can actually uh, sama ada kita akan mentor the, the project ataupun kita akan tengok di mana yang kalau dia boleh dikena pakai oleh industri kita may also may look into sponsoring the the project uh, so this are area yang kita because kita nak apa project-project yang bertaraf industri um, di diwujudkan jadi uh, what we can do if, if we can have the list we can actually try to look into project matching uh, with you know, with our sasnet members i think that can be uh, for start uh, di mana kita boleh membantu I think some of the pilot project some of the project yang kita rasa kita boleh ambil uh, apa take on board we can basically uh, provide our apa our sasnet members to also apa uh, mentor uh, the project to make sure that dia really apa uh, itu meet the industry standard itu dari saya ya thank you Jenny Syam thank you terima kasih uh, Cik okay, saya Dr Noor hmm. saya respon sikit yang berkaitan dengan uh, IR TS Syam tadi sebenarnya kalau kita nak dapatkan uh, orang kata data untuk setiap projek yang memang kita uh, mengalami sedikit orang kata masalah lah sebab kita tak ada sistem yang kita boleh bantu sebenarnya apa yang kita ada sebab tu kita buat uh, kita mohon daripada setiap politeknik dan kolej komuniti supaya dia masuk dan dia dia sebab kita ada banyak jabatan banyak politeknik banyak kolej komuniti setiap jabatan ada banyak juga program. Jadi setiap program tu dia ada projek-projek, uh, projek akhir, projek final dan sebagainya. Ini yang sebenarnya kita buat MPC SAS Award supaya uh, semua poli walaupun dia rasa program dia tu bukannya manfaat tapi dia just masuk nanti dalam segi daripada situ maknanya yang akan menilai adalah GPM. Jadi sekarang ni yang kita nak macam mana cara supaya kita boleh galakkan semua ni, semua ni masuk supaya kita dapat all the data yang seperti mana yang TS Isyam. Sekarang ni yang ini yang kita maksudnya yang kami mengalami masalah ni nak kata kita tak kita eh, saya pun tak pasti nak bantu macam mana kita kata promosi ni supaya semua macam kita kata nak dapatkan ok projek all the program yang ada di Politeknik Kolej Komuniti memang ada projek ha, kita tak pasti tapi yang sebagai volunteer kita tak boleh bagi arahan kepada semua poli dan kolej supaya hantar semua projek sebab dia projek dia akan Uh, every year dia berlainan dia banyak maksud berlainan jadi yang ini yang sebenarnya saya pun nak bincang dengan Dr. Noor supaya uh, kita kita nak try masukkan dalam uh, uh, politeknik punya orang kata uh, web ataupun politeknik punya uh, apa ni ya whatsapp uh, TP dan sebagainya tapi itulah kan Dr. Noor belum ada respon macam mana kita nak yang, yang kami mohon bantuan daripada all the orang kata industri ni macam mana kita nak menarik menarik supaya politeknik dan college community ni boleh bagi dan nak dia boleh bagi dia boleh manage all the pro, apa yang kata data dia ada database ada, ataupun ada something lah kita kata uh, maybe apps ke whatever lah yang boleh dia just bila ada dia, dia tak payah perlu susah-susah maksudnya sekarang dia rasa macam susah dia kena buat all the something orang kata detail dan sebagainya dia masuk ha, jadi sebab ini biasalah kan banyak kerja kalau kita tengok di poli dan college di pelbagai kerja yang ada macam-macam jawatan yang dia kena pegang ha, jadi bila kita tak ada orang kata tak boleh memaksa kami nak mengumpulkan tu memang memang saya rasa memang betul cadangan uh, kami pun try buat dah saya rasa dengan Dr. Noor saya dah try buat dah kita dah hantar uh, link kepada semua kami pun dah ada grup uh, pengurus projek hijau tapi still uh, penyertaan tu ha, itu yang kita kata macam mana kita nak dapatkan bantuan daripada industri ni supaya kesedaran tu muncul supaya dia menghantar that project dia, dia, uh, dia boleh bagi kita all the project yang ada di poli dan kalau tak kisah lama ke baru dan sebagainya ada ke uh, macam uh. Puan Hania hmm. Kabaran ni memang sentiasa ada <laughs> Dia, dia yeah. tidak akan dia, dia tidak akan apa macam kata Raib gitu je <laughs> Sebab uh, Kita berhubung dengan manusia 
and most important thing manusia akan tanya ke mana arah tujuan dia ha itulah ya yeah. so sama juga macam saya buat dengan mindset Malaysian science engineering and technology okay. kami dah ada kolaborasi mereka sejak 4 5 tahun sudah they were not really very keen on sustainability because they rasa dia engineer dia kata i'm more into science into engineering so waste management tu considered as a csr project tapi sekarang dia tahu the element is that kalau you tak integrate sustainability dalam you punya project management benda tu akan uh, apa kata tidak membawa impak kepada you punya ability to have a strategic thinking sebab sustainability dia bukan dalam element project operation dia dalam strategic mindset kalau you tak ada dalam strategic mindset tu itu yang membuatkan ramai orang tekan apa paling kata tekandas sebab itu dalam uh, boot camp kita galakkan orang ada idea ideation keluarkan sebanyak mana idea yang boleh supaya you boleh uh, hasilkan something yang uh, boleh di naik pulih, naik pulih ataupun diperbaiki dengan lebih mudah lagi ya sebab kalau you just that, the answer is not in the book the answer is out there so when you look at pozonto ya you tengok to all the apa ni sama ada bus station ke LRT station ke you tengok all the usahawan yang buka uh, kedai gerai kecil ke gerai besar ke you look at their waste management Dr. Tono saya hmm. rasa boleh kita minta pandangan daripada peserta yang ada ni apa sebenarnya kekangan dan masalah yang uh, kalau just adalah yang boleh volunteer bagi tahu kita sebenarnya apa kekangan dan masalah yang sebenarnya dia orang hadapi yang menyebabkan dia orang tak dapat uh, orang kata nak participate full full dia <laughs> just kita nak ada idea okay. boleh okay. kita okay. okay. uh, tengok let them uh, hmm. highlight what are their issues yeah, so that betul. kita boleh assist wherever possible lah yeah. kan betul Mimi dapatkan pandangan daripada ha, peserta kita. Hadiri. Kalau tak ada tu, saya so just want to ask the Dr Nicole. Dr Nicole is already having involved very very big project. Ya, yeah, project dia bukan kecil-kecil lah. Ah, dalam 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 impact yang nak ni measure client-client semua related dengan sustainability ni one of the biggest one is always waste management even you can see uh, many buildings uh, benda yang tak terkawal tu resources yang terbiar ataupun terbuang so those are things yang I would say polytechnic can handle hanya tak tahu sama ada benda tu penting atau tak penting itu kerja yang boleh dibawa oleh siapa-siapa uh, yang graduate daripada politeknik untuk keluar nanti menjadi waste management expert, menjadi energy management expert because those are part and parcel of the new career. This next week kami dengan MySet akan keluarkan satu sustainability uh, skill development week sebab kita tahu bahawa semua pelajar-pelajar UPM tu mereka tidak tahu apakah jawatan-jawatan yang dipilih oleh orang-orang yang nak masuk ke dalam projek mampan. So that's why they need to be upgraded dari segi kemampanan. So this is the same thing. Uh, industri dah minta untuk benda ini dibawa di, di masuk dalam projek mereka. Tapi kalau orang yang datang ke dalam projek mereka tu tidak ada kemahiran, so there will be still be a mismatch. So maybe Nicole, you, Dr. Nicole, you want to say something about this, about your the demand that is expected from your client and where is the gap? Uh, yes, Dr. No, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I totally agree there is a big gap because right, right now we have got clients who has got issues, for example, with waste management. They have waste which they don't know how to manage. And that is where they would engage us as the industry player to advise them what to do. Now, to undertake this project, it would be good if we can get the polytechnics to work with us. Because polytechnics, you have uh, students, you have resources, and, and, and we can expose them uh, to this, expose the graduates to the industry to 
to, to highlight to them what are the real issues at hand, all right? Um, we learn from books that, oh, some people don't know how to manage waste, right? And there are ways to manage it. But this is real experience, real stories that is happening. Big companies that, that don't know what to do and all they need, all they are doing is uh, stop using plastic. That's where they stop, all right? And all they know is sort out their, their, their rubbish, all, right? all the waste. But they don't talk about so many other types of waste. Ways of your, your, your resources, your um, electricity efficiency in your systems, your procurement. So, so many types of waste. It's not just about uh, material waste. So, for example, if we are, uh, we, we have a project which we will need to address the waste. This is real waste in a, in a supermarket, let's say, yeah? supermarket. They don't have data. So, uh, one of the ways is we can work with the polytechnic to take this as part of the project. How do we uh, capture? How do we capture this data? How much waste do they throw away every day? Simple question. So we need people to monitor. We need people to check on them, to audit. When they put on the ticket, today I got two kgs of um, waste from this store, three kgs from that store. So they have ticketed. So if the polytechnic uh, can work with us, assigns some of the students, this is more like a more, more than an internship. I think this is like uh, what Dr. No said, this is skill development, right? We actually put them in place and say, okay, how do we track their wastage? How do we track um, their procurement? How do we track their disposal system? Okay. And after what happened, did they just throw it into the, the garbage bin? And that's the end of the waste management. So these are many, many processes that we can uh, get the polytechnics to be involved uh, on the ground. That means they have to be on the ground, come with us, work with us, and then build it into their project. And they will have live data that we can share with them. I think in terms of the industry, we don't have a problem sharing with the academy, but we also need to, to, to um, to uh, allow the, the polytechnics to come in and use whatever tools we have. Our expertise, our system, our uh, digital platform where we can you know, um, analyze data very quickly. You know, we have programs that we can use. So it's gonna be a two way. We helping them and they also helping us with their resources and we can take them on the ground. This is one way I can, I can see. The other, the other way I can see is where um, as a, uh, a leader, an ESG leader, we are approaching our clients to do ESG reporting. We are, approach, uh, we are getting our clients to do ESG assessment. Now, how the best way to, to learn is to do, right? Come with us, we, got, we, we will invite the, the, the polytechnics to come in and join us as we assess all these uh, companies. I think that's a, a, a very practical way to engage the, the polytechnics to join us in the industry side. And they will also understand what are our pains? What are our industry pains? What are the data that we need? What are the resources that we, we want to, uh, we want our, our, how should I say? We want our initiatives to be endorsed by the polytechnics as well, the academicians. Are we doing it right? Uh, how can we, make it better. So they can also put in their own feedback and help us to perform better in our scope of works. Back to you, Dr. No. Dr. Nicole, when you talk about supermarket, there are thousands of supermarket in Malaysia. How many supermarket really do waste management? You can really count. That is why you can see our climate change is not making any change in the, in the temperature because the amount of carbon being released is not being reduced. So this is where live project that we want to do is real project. We don't want to do a project just for the sake of uh, an idea only. That's why when we talk about green project management is a real case project. It has to handle data and create the transformation. Now, Noli, you have been handling with the ecosystem. You know very well that 
sometimes integrating all the element of the uh, especially the the biodiversity the animals the you know the fauna and the flora people don't want to integrate all this because they think this is not my job and not my role and it's too much to 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 handle is it humanistic values that we are missing that people don't want to think in respect to its integrating technical knowledge and also uh, what I call uh, academic knowledge with humanistic value. Is there an element of when uh, Hania um, was talking about, Rohania was talking about soft skill. Soft skill is not something that you can be, uh, it's something that you, you belajar, it's something that you must integrate. Once you integrate the soft skill into your project, there you have it. It's not something that I be belajar communication skill, leadership skill. You know, they only use thing you can get soft skill. It's all about mm -hmm. humanistic values, psychological values. Itu something yang kena ada dalam project management. So maybe Noli, you want to share with you how you train your consultant or your intern on how to have that values in sustainability project. Okay. Um. Thank you, Dr. Nil. Um. Um, I think to panjang so alang dia kecil ya when they so um um how we train our our staff eh? because after um few years joining GPM and Sasnet so um we know that um there are missing part in landscape uh, projects or architecture projects even because um is a tool architecture id landscape ni kita kata we are so ego in our design so we thought that we are arts people um and then macam nicole engineer chemical engineer those are uh, science people you know uh, mathematicals you know um lots of things that to be uh, a formula tapi bila designers when we wanted to design something into environment kita tak nampak uh, the needs of the tools we're so eager bila kita design kan you think oh this is um impact to the environment i'm designed for peoples tapi tak ada tak ada tools then when uh, when we join in gpm i think tak ramai dah hania hania lain saya kita juga dia uh, we are in a same boat um tak ramai yang 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 tahu tools gpm ni dan tak tak rasa pun benda tu penting so this is where clauston take this first step uh, first steps eh, to to um spread the awareness that whatever we do to hanya environment saja um, as socials and economic to tak banyak kita approach so by then um we take first step satu we create awareness among us dulu inside our company so we do um setiap new in uh, staff yang datang uh, we put in not as um apa tu info and then we put the awareness uh, during interviews tetapi landscape architects ni dia banyak banyak task you know, uh, kalau I tunjuk tadi proses dia banyak sampai dia pun tak boleh nak fikir. So then uh, this year kita buka satu unit um, in um, we looking into on the sustainability um, measurings and also um, components ataupun support to our landscape architects. Selain daripada dia orang tahu awareness tapi in terms of calculation, in terms of assisting them um, apakah komponen yang boleh ada ke dalam sesuatu projek. Uh, so we we creating a one unit. Eh, itu yang mungkin um, we can also link ataupun collaborate dengan uh, polisas atau poli polis lah. Eh? Um, if you could uh, bring uh, bring in more people that we can also train out because landscape ni dia topik dia besar sangat besar apa apa di luar bangunan is all landscape and that is a built environment. Jadi for example if you do condominiums, so I uh, design dia detail lain. Uh, kita tak boleh nak kira pokok yang nak bring the biodiversity, content di lain. But the calculations on sustainability punya aspect is different. We're talking about solar, we're talking about rainwater harvesting, we're talking about um, uh, materials, plants, um, scope di berbeza. Below we design park, the scope is totally different. Uh, we're talking about biodiversity, you know, uh, a lot of things. Maknanya dalam landscape ni, kalau I nak suruh seorang landscape arkitek, tahu semua um element sustainable to be put in india project in hand i think payah so that's why what we do we have our own unit now so more than skill architect kena masuk class green project management they know what they should do but in terms of assisting on creating material to best suit 
um, to each project yang dia handle, we need to have our team members yang ada satu unit khas. Uh, itu yang um, it's not easy to find. Yeah, Doctor, it's not easy to find sebab in Lensia Architecture, I try to find people setiap kali kita interview nak tak buat benda ni, dia tak nampak benda tu sesuatu yang dia perlu. Sebab I think the awareness among Lensia Architect yang memang dia, kami ni sebenarnya, we are, we, kita open, kita dah practice, I think 70% is on on sustainable. Tetapi awareness, um, emphasize on this mindset, sustainability, leadership tu uh, masih lagi um, rendah. So that's why I, I wanted to take that as as first step tu uh, a bit tough juga, Dr. Yes, I know the challenge is where to find the people yang boleh mempunyai pemikiran yang yang begitu. Mm. Sebab it's a competency, ya. Yeah? It yeah. is not something yang you boleh dapat daripada the general public. Maybe yeah. engineer Sham, you are an engineer. You know very well, you are also from IAEM. A lot of engineers, they want to go for profit. They don't care anymore about, you know, what, what the world. As long as I make money, I definitely uh, will go for it. So uh, talking about now, when you need to do ESG reporting, you got to really give feedback back regarding what is the type of resources that you use and it is already a compulsory. So where do you think you're going to get resources from the engineers in terms of how to do ESG reporting if they have never done a sustainability project before? Okay, first part, uh, let me just go back one step back. Huh? That uh, kalau kita lihat kepada uh, those days, okay, being engineer, basically, you are looking into maintaining ataupun apa, constructing new facilities. And then uh, you get a license and then you basically, apa, um, there you go. Tapi uh, nowadays, you are talking about license to operate. I think that's very important. Huh? That uh, because of the public awareness, because of the new regulation being put in place, jadi your license to operate become uh, tougher and tougher. Di mana you need to actually know about your what you release, what you actually apa uh, dispose, okay, what you actually apa how you actually handle all these apa uh, the toxic uh, waste and so on atau shadow waste. Jadi uh. people are start to, start to be aware, especially engineers start to aware that uh, for them to actually have their um, their company atau their organisation for license to operate, they need to actually uh, they need to be uh, aware on this. Uh, waste management dan sebagainya. Jadi coming back to the um, the reporting uh, and I think uh, there are basically apa uh, slowly people are evolving okay macam uh, as, uh, you highlighted in the beginning that the PMP people they know the importance of uh, ESG so they are not uh, apa um, tying up with uh, GPM untuk uh, untuk dapatkan the, the knowledge and the um, special apa uh, specialty ya uh, knowledge and as well as apa the the, the know how to actually uh, perform this ESG reporting dan sebagainya. Jadi uh, there are going to be a big move uh, I I see that uh, with engineer uh, circle that they are moving into, uh, towards uh, itu uh, towards this apa ESG reporting. So the ESG uh, kalau tu, dulu the the planet as well as the people always be seen as CSR but no anymore now basically is a license to operate is a business uh, by itself kan? jadi bukan uh, bukan basically over and above the business uh, apa, uh, activity tapi now it is in the business that you need to do in order for you to actually remain relevant and be remain in business jadi uh, time things have changed uh, jadi uh, mau tak mau engineers have to actually apa, understand and appreciate that uh, what they always perceive as CSR activity, but now basically are basically the engineering know-how and engineering activity that they need to actually uh, master. Thank you, Janisha. I want to highlight something very important. Kita ni semua suka keluarkan entrepreneur. Banyak entrepreneur muda nak jadi entrepreneur dan akan jadi service provider kepada syarikat-syarikat. Now, in sustainability ESG report, Every service provider akan di semak ataupun dianalyskan dari segi dia punya sustainability knowledge. Ini real eh? All green procurement akan semak balik semua senarai supplier yang mana mengikut compliance sustainability dan siapa yang tidak. Sebab ESG ni dia dah merupakan international demand ataupun international compliance. Banyak syarikat Malaysia yang dulu gah keluar produk-produk Malaysia boleh ekspor tapi ditahan ekspor sekarang. Kenapa ditahan ekspor? Sebab mereka 
dapat maklumat mengatakan syarikat tersebut tidak mematuhi ASG. So kalau syarikat besar pun ditahan dan tidak boleh mem, uh, menghantar produk mereka keluar kerana tidak mengikut ESG, itu merupakan trade barrier yang paling besar. Dia lebih besar pada COVID. Dia tak boleh bawa barang-barang kita keluar. Begitu juga dengan minyak masak, banyak ke isu-isu uh, kita punya plantation, ya, isu-isu labor. Ini merupakan sustainability punya isu. Kalau Puan Rohania cerita tadi pasal uh, leadership tentang macam mana polisi C nak handle, must understand the international issue dah. Kita punya produk sendiri tak boleh export. Sebab kita punya supplier-supplier tidak mengikut compliance sustainability. Now, ini kita sebagai graduan nak keluar jadi usahawan. Katalah nak keluar satu uh, nak keluar satu produk untuk bagi sepekalan kepada mana-mana. Kalau mereka tidak mengikut ESG, mereka tidak boleh jadi supplier kepada syarikat-syarikat besar. Ini isu besar. So that's why it is sustainability ni is a business bukan kerana dia merupakan uh, satu apa kata law. Bukan, it's a compliance on practices. Kalau kita tak praktiskan benda itu, maka ia akan membawa satu tindakan negatif pada bisnes kita dan kepada bisnes orang lain. Kita yang tak ada kena-mengena pun akan membawa impak kepada orang lain. Dan mereka akan stop kita kerana kita membawa negatif impak kepada mereka. Contoh, one company is an international company. Dia hantar satu produk yang related dengan semiconductor punya produk. And they have been supplying internationally. One of their subsidiary, salah satu subsidiary aja, meng, uh, mengambil satu uh, service provider untuk security. Ambil security daripada lokal tempatan yang tidak memenuhi syarat sustainability ESG. Now, itu subsidiary dia. Tak ada kena dia. Tapi sebab subsidiary dia memelang, meng, tidak men, menjalankan aktiviti yang baik, syarikat holding company itu tidak boleh hantar produk itu keluar. Selagi subsidiary dia itu tidak memenuhi uh, pematuhan ESG. So that is why MPC, uh, Malaysian Productivity Corporation, memang dah takut. Madrid dah takut. Sebab sustainability is not about just the 5P. It's about a compliance on trade barrier. Kalau kita tak handle this issue, maksud kita tak boleh export dan kita tak ada income. Our economy will be sekam by international standard yang akan mengata kita tidak mengikut peraturan ESG. So di mana position kita untuk nak menaikkan taraf negara kita supaya mematuhi syarat-syarat international dalam keadaan kita sendiri tak peka tentang what is sustainable practice. Kita ingat benda ni kecil tapi sebenarnya dah besar. So this is where we must understand. Sustainability, it is not just a way of life. It is already a compliance yang perlu dipatuh. So kalau tak ada kompetensi ni dalam kita punya work scope, work project kita dalam pemakaian harian kita walaupun di rumah, di tempat kerja, we ourselves are not a practitioner lagi. Kita hanya bercakap aja, Cakaplah awareness macam mana pun. Tapi tak ada praktis. And bila tak ada praktis, syarikat-syarikat lain tak praktis. So in the end, we are still backward. Negara lain dah maju. Negara kita masih lagi backward. Alright, So this is where kesedaran yang saya nak bawa ni dalam green project management, kita jangan ambil kompetensi tu setakat nak ambil sertifikat. Tapi kita mesti bawa arus perubahan. Kalau tidak, kita tak boleh jadi leader. Right now, we are already being challenged by Indonesia, being challenged by Vietnam, being challenged by Thailand. They are going to sustainability issues very strongly. So kalau Malaysia tak handle sustainability issues secara kuat, where are we going to position ourselves in the future? So I guess the answer lies in our manpower. Kalau kita punya manpower tak kuat, we are against our own income earning lah. Kita go against our own income generation. 
So the future will not be as bright. Okay, so saya bagi peluang pada once again Puan Rohania. Maybe you want to add something as a as a perlu kata wrap up for our morning session ni. Sebab saya memang suka membuka isu-isu yang mungkin ramai orang tak faham. Kenapa kita tekankan sustainability ni? Sebab dia bukan kompetensi setakat untuk modul polisi. Dia adalah pemakaian industri. So kalau orang nak pergi kerja pun sekarang, it has to be adopted. So maybe Puan Rania want to say something. Okay. Uh, terima kasih Dr. Noor. Sebenarnya semangat Dr. Noor itu sebenarnya uh, menyebabkan kami juga, saya juga saya harap saya... Uh, Polisi C juga semangat seperti mana yang Dr. Noor nak membantu kami dan juga tim-tim members dalam uh, JPM ni nak membantu kami. Sebab kita dah buka ruang, insyaAllah dengan uh, uh, dipermudahkan urusan kita ni supaya uh, semangat tu datang. Jadi yang yang mendengar hari ini kita ada seramai uh, 74 orang uh, partisipan ni mendapat sedikit sebanyak dan sekiranya ada apa-apa yang diperlukan boleh kontak je kepada saya rasa kepada panel-panel kita ni boleh kan direct kontak kepada mereka sekiranya berminat contohnya kalau LR ni member saya sebenarnya Nodi ni kami, kami sama-sama dalam satu bidang cuma saya tak <laughs> saya tak in depth dalam, dalam okay let's get cuma title je <laughs> tapi saya rasa saya sangat kagum lah dengan dia sebab dia dah membawa bawa landscape tu kepada dimension yang berlainan daripada apa yang kita ada sebelum ni. Dan juga Dr. Nicole, Alhamdulillah Dr. Nicole pun uh, the big tau, no, sangat besar sebenarnya banyak banyak sebenarnya orang kata opportunity yang boleh uh, kita dapat daripada Dr. Nicole and team dan juga uh, TS uh, Hisham ni memang sangat well known lah untuk <coughs> uh, untuk uh, sustainability. Jadi juga kepada uh, polisas uh, yang sanggup bersama kita membantu kita walaupun bagaimana keadaannya jadi saya rasa partisipan yang ada tu harap sekiranya ada apa-apa isu dan kita akan sambung lagi kan sampai petang ke Dr. Noor dan kita ada siri yang kedua siri kedua sebegini juga jadi tolonglah sampaikan juga kepada sahabat-sahabat yang berada di luar sana yang belum masuk sebab setiap kali saya akan dapat setiap kali tanya Puan kami ni gratis sebagai pengurus hijau tapi apa yang kami kena buat apa yang kami kena buat setiap kali jadi jadi ini ini adalah peluang kepada semua yang ada di sana yang ada di luar sana bersama-sama kita untuk Siri seterusnya, siri berikutnya supaya kita dapat faham bahawa uh, hijau tu bukan hanya kepada teknologi hijau sahaja tapi kepada uh, seluruh bidang yang ada kepada semua bidang. Okey, Dr. Noor, terima kasih. Kita insyaAllah jumpa lagi. Uh, saya petang ni saya ada satu meeting. Uh, terima kasihlah Dr. Noor. Jadi terima saya serahkan kepada Dr. Noor sepenuhnya untuk uh, mengetuai lagi sesi-sesi yang berikut dan akan datang. Jadi terima kasih semua panel-panel juga. Ada uh, Noli, Dr. Nicole juga. Hai. Okay. Right. Okay. Boleh tak nah, saya ni. Ya, okay. boleh tak saya ajak ni lah. Kita serah balik kepada MC Anissa. Nanti dok noli noli nak cakap tu sikit. Ada boleh, boleh tak? Okay. Boleh nak macam lah macam ni sebab um, Dr. Niko pun highlight tadi. So uh, ni ah uh, ni uh, macam ni kalau uh, what I see now uh, untuk spread awareness daripada industri, pertama-tama internship lah. Ya, can, we get, uh, can we get uh, internship kita jangan jangan rambang untuk landscape ke untuk um, engineering ke tak oh, kita spesifik terus kepada sustainable apa apa kalau landscape sustainable landscape internship so then we arrange with you mana kita industri kita memang buat interview yang budak-budak khas untuk sustainable landscape for example then okay. kita ambil kita train uh, biasanya kalau Clausen hari tu bila MCO um, Ilam tak buat ni kita buat, kita tahu ada sebahagian uh, students yang tak boleh graduate because of semester tu dia tak boleh buat physical uh, internship. Dan banyak juga uh, company yang terperanjat kan at that time. So what Clauston do, we quickly buat modules untuk online internship program. And okay. then we berjaya dalam 6, 12 orang budak boleh graduate. Okay, so that's ini... what we do. We could do okay, one yeah, as well. Boleh, betul. Yang ini sebenarnya kami sebab kita yang ini adalah berdasarkan dasar. Bila kita hmm. nak buat sesuatu yang berubah, kita maybe kita boleh buat duduk orang kata berbincang, meja bulat dan sebagainya. Selepas ni kita akan berbincang bagaimana kita boleh jadikan. Sebab sekarang ni kita nak kata uh, graduan tadi internship on green. Tapi sebab kita memang program green tu memang kita tak ada satu program khas. Kita cuma uh, tak ada satu program diploma on green, something tak ada. Jadi kita ada embed berkursus sahaja. Jadi nanti memang yang ini for the dasar 
besar kita kena bincang ada perbincangan lain seperti mana kita kami buat blueprint kami dan sebagainya jadi nanti insyaallah kita akan jumpa untuk uh, next sesi kita akan berbincang nantilah okey insyaallah thank you, thank you atas all semangat tu thank you thank you <laughs> it's not easy it's <laughs> good thing Thank you Dr. Noh, memang semangat. Alhamdulillah, membantu kami. Kami kami sangat berbesar hati. Okay, uh, hand over thank kepada... Thank you, Anissa. Uh, hand over kepada Anissa, MC. Okay, thank you. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih buat semua para penceramah dan juga ahli panel yang sama-sama berkongsi pendapat masing-masing dan sangat-sangat menarik, sangat rancak juga berkongsian uh, antara uh, para panel dan had para hadirin. Jadi sekarang masa pun telah mencuburi kita. Uh, sekarang adalah waktu rehatlah untuk kita semua dan diingatkan sesi yang seterusnya akan berlangsung dan juga bermula pada pukul 2 petang. Uh, jadi harapnya dapat uh, berkumpul sebelum dua petang lah untuk kita mulakan sesi uh, yang seterusnya. Sekian terima kasih semua. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih. Selamat tengah hari. Selamat tengah hari. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Selamat tengah hari.